Hey guys, welcome back to the Migo YouTube channel. Today we've got a much requested grow light. It's a Spider Farmer SF1000. And yeah, we're gonna give it a full test and review. Let's take a closer look. Well, the construction of the light is pretty simple. We've got a PCB board here in the front, printed circuit board with lots of small SMDs, small single mounted device LEDs, mid power LEDs mounted on here in arrays. They're a mixture of, the bulk of them are Samsung LM301B LEDs, a mixture of warm white and cool white ones. Uh, I think about 3000K color temperature and 4000K. Um, and they are supplemented with 660 nanometer deep reds and some far red LEDs also. So stuck this under the spectra radiometer, the Ascensitec, and took a spectrum reading. The overall color temperature is 3600 color temperature and uh, 3600K and that's very suitable for um, full cycle growing from seed to harvest. The spectrum is perfect. Um, just a note, they have a surface coating over the LEDs on the PCB. It's a, it's a little silicon um, protective coating, which is nice to see. It, um, it is the same material as the phosphorus coating on the diodes on the LEDs. So they bond together and they don't separate, which is good because uh, some others do. Uh, the only downside with the silicon is it's a little bit delicate. It can scratch or scrape off. Um, so it's not that robust, but it's um, certainly better than nothing. The PCB is then mounted onto an aluminium backing plate. Uh, just a plain um, aluminium backing plate with uh, holes in the corners for mounting. And then the LED driver is mounted on the back of the plate. Personally, I'd rather see the driver remote from the light and a bit of extra cable added to the package so that you can hang the driver outside of the grow room and the light inside. But in any case, this is where it's mounted in this one. Um, it's got brackets to separate it from the um, backing plate um, and give a bit of thermal separation but it's still going to run a bit warmer than it, than it could otherwise. The big downside is the dimmer. Well, the dimmer is on the underside of the driver so you've got to unscrew four screws to get access to the dimmer, pull out the little plug and then there's a plastic uh, screw inside. And this form of dimmer is really only for uh, very occasional adjustment. It's really for engineers to set up the light when they're commissioning or set up a, a lighting system when they're commissioning it and not really for everyday adjustments so not a big huge fan of those but um, otherwise it's it's a it's a nice simple construction it's 97 watts consumed uh, and um, rated for a two by two so we hung it at its recommended height of minimum height of 12 inches or 30 centimeters into a two by two with reflective walls. And we use the Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor to take 16 measurements of the power evenly over the grid. We could then get the average and then total power output. So this light outputs 190 micromoles to the grow area. You can divide that by the consumed power of 97 watts and we get a 1.96 efficiency, uh, which is pretty good. It's very good in fact, and uh, given that this is a good value light, retails at about 160 euros um, in Europe. Uh, yeah, that's that's very good bang for buck. Comes with a pretty decent manual as well, with the, with the hanging information and the spread and, and setup information as well, so that's another positive. And uh, yeah, overall well worth the review. Um, just another note I have, another highly requested note, no, light is the um, uh, ES300, the Electric Sky. That is on its way, um, they are sending that over finally. Um, any other grow lights you'd like to see tested, please leave in the comments below. And yeah, hope you enjoyed the review. Take care.